We live in a world made out of stories. New experiences are interpreted in terms of old stories. All of our knowledge is contained in stories and the mental mechanisms that construct them and retrieve them. That's not the musing of a literature professor. It's a direct quote from computer scientist Roger Shank, a pioneer of artificial intelligence. And that insight has been echoed by psychologists, economists, and communications professionals. When we study literature, we're not just reading for fun. We're developing the mental tools that we need to understand the world around us. Reading a novel creates new connections between brain networks that persist long after we close the book. Poetry describes familiar things in unfamiliar ways. It makes us stop and wonder about the things we thought we already knew. And literature builds social intelligence. After reading a difficult novel, people are able to recognize subtle emotions in other people and understand complex social situations better than if they had read nonfiction. With all these strategic mental benefits, it's little wonder this kind of expertise is highly sought after in our information economy. That's why we at the English department here at Texas A&M University Corpus Christi have designed the core literature program for people of all backgrounds, all majors and all career paths. For the next semester, you can train your critical awareness your verbal ability, and your social intelligence by reading and discussing some of the most challenging and rewarding works of literature. The core literature program is really committed to developing skills that will be useful to students as they move through the university and into their prospective careers. Some of the skills you might develop in core literature classes include critical and analytical thinking skills. According to a study by the Association of Colleges and Universities in 2013, 93% of employers claim that, quote, a demonstrated capacity to think critically, communicate clearly, and solve complex problems is more important than a job candidate's undergraduate major. Reading literature is relevant to any field because when you learn to read literature well, what you're really learning how to do is think critically about stories that are being told to you. So whether it's a medical case study, or a business pitch, or a psychological study, you're really being told a story about the world. And if you can learn to think critically about who's telling you that story, how they're telling you that story, and why they're telling you that story in a particular way, you gain a new kind of power to think more critically about the motivations behind the story and to start to evaluate whether or not you accept the stories about the world that you're being told. Why do we need literature uh, outside of the major? Why, why are we interested in English um, if we're not English majors? Why should we study and read books uh, if we're not going to do that for a living? I think the answer is simple. Books teach us how to empathize. They teach us how to interact with other people, to see their perspective, um, to understand where they're coming from. These are all important aspects of being a human being in the world. But it's also analytical. You'll have, you'll have come in knowing what text you, you've read, and then you'll discuss it, you'll break it down, you're learning skills that you're gonna apply later on. And, and that was a totally different perspective. It was a bunch of texts that I never would have read on my own that were outside my wheelhouse, so to speak. And so I learned to view things through a different lens. As part of the core requirement for language, philosophy, and culture, students must complete three credit hours in one of the following courses. English 2316, Literature and Culture, English 2332, Literature of the Western World to the Renaissance, or English 2333, Literature of the Western World from the Enlightenment to the Present. Each class is going to be different. There's a lot of variety in these classes, and students have a lot to pick from, and it's always a great experience learning from professors who are passionate about the research interests that they have. Hi, I'm Dale Pattison. Uh, I'll be teaching English 2316 Literature and Culture uh, in the class title is Movement, Migration, and the Imagination. This semester we're going to be talking about literature that deals with border crossings. I'm interested in the kinds of stories that people bring with them as they move across borders, the kinds of histories they're bringing with them, um, and the experiences. And I'm interested in the connections between the U.S. and Latin America, and how literature gives us ways to deal with the issues that come with these border crossings. Hey there, I'm Professor Murphy, and uh, I'm going to be teaching this uh, class on, uh, on uh, the radical romantics and the, the beats. And so we're going to be using this book here. This is the Poems Millennium. It's a fabulous piece of work here. And the Portable Beat Reader, and we'll be reading Richard Brannigan's uh, The Hawkline Monster. Not this whole thick thing, but just a, about that much of it, okay? 
And then we're going to be reading On the Road by Jack Kerouac. All right, we'll have lots to talk about. I can't wait. Hello, I'm Eric Luttrell. Next semester, I'll be teaching an online edition of English 2332, Western World Literature from the Bronze Age to the Renaissance. We'll be starting early, with literature written more than 3,000 years ago on clay tablets like this one. We'll study myths, epics, poetry, drama. We'll read the Epic of Gilgamesh, Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, the Aeneid of Virgil, the Old English poem Beowulf, the medieval Spanish epic El Cid, Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, and Shakespeare's Othello. More than 3,000 years of literary history, all in 15 weeks. My core literature class focuses on monstrosities, and my favorite text from the course is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. So in the course, we ask a lot of questions about why we create monsters and how we draw distinctions between ourselves and the monsters we create. So what do we see as the differences between monsters and humans, and do they hold up in the text that we're reading? I'm Dr. Sarah Salter, and I'll be teaching core literature online in fall 2017. Our online course is going to focus on newspapers and magazines published in English from 1700 all the way up until the now. And we will read things like fiction, poetry, advice columns, listicles, essays, exposés, all kinds of stories that are both factual and fictional. Across the course of core literature, we will talk about the ways that fiction and truth fold together in periodicals, we'll think a little bit about Stephen Colbert's notion of truthiness, and we will use methods of literary reading to, to explore the history of serial publications um, in the Western world. I hope you can join me for Core Literature Online. Thanks.